One smash, two grab, three away. 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 Just like falling off a log. 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 We were having a rehearsal. falling off a log. Winkle, stop conducting and listen. Now, this is the parcel with a book in it, see? You're well-dressed and you're carrying the parcel. You walk down Bond Street, you stop looking at Jewelers' window. Hatch and I are waiting with a car. And it's one smash, two grab, and three away. Can't go wrong. And we won't let you down, whatever happens. See, dear? Remember, you're the star. Yeah. I'm the star. Feeling all right? Yeah. I'm the star. Hmm. You can go ahead now, but not too much of it. Thanks. You know who we are? We're from West End Central. We've come to see you about the Bond Street smash and grab. And we caution you that you need not say anything unless you so desire. But whatever you do say will be taken down in writing. Unused in evidence. If you want to talk quiet, talk where there's a lot of noise. One smash. Two grab. Three away. Um, my hands. My hands! Uh. Leo Martin, you stand convicted of felony. Have you anything to say before sentence is passed? No. This is the first time since you came here that you've been addressed by your name and not by a number. That means you're now free to go out into the world and start a new life. Yes, sir. How are your wrists? They're all right, thanks. Have you any complaints concerning your treatment? No. If you should require assistance, you may apply to the Discharged Prisoners' Aid Society. It's in the phone book. Well, goodbye, Martin. Good luck. And don't come back. I won't, sir.
Look who's here. Hello, Leo. How's tricks? How are you, Leo? Lately? Not for a week or two. What are they up to? Loman's the manager of the Palais de Dance, the one at Brinsmead. Of course, the bosses don't know his racket. Yeah. And Hatchet? In a garage. Leo, you're not after him, are you? That's my business. You wasn't there for thought you got copped. Wasn't it? They said they'd never let me down no matter what happened. And they did. What could they have done, eh? Got out of the car and waded into the mob. What would have been the use? I ask you, Leah, what good could it have done? They let me down. They kidded me into a job I didn't want to do, you know that? They knew the risks and handed them all to me. Well, I'm out of a job. So Mr. Loman's gonna find me one. What the devil do you want? Evening, Lelman. Who the hell are you? Perhaps if I take off the dark glasses and the beard, you'll recognize me. That door is marked private. Kindly observe it. From what I overheard, it should be marked pledges redeemed. Well, I've come to keep a pledge, a long outstanding one. Oh, I'll think it over, Gus. All right, use that door, please. Night. Well, what's the pledge? I don't blame you, Gus Lerman. Sometimes it's far safer to ignore your friends. Yes, it is. Well, Leo, what can I do for you? I want a job. With me? For you. Shall we say one like a, a friend? Have a drink. No, thanks. You're not used to it, eh? What do you think of that? Four pounds a bottle. Wicked, isn't it? Is it? Now, look, Leo, you got caught, and, uh... Yes, and you and Hatchet got away with it, thanks to me. Yes, thanks to you. Why didn't you talk? Because of a pledge. Yeah? What was that? Just a private one. How about it, Gus? Now, look, Martin, let's face facts. You've been out of touch with things for some time, and there's no fault of mine. Your hands aren't as useful as they ought to be. Let's face it, you bungle things pretty badly. You fat clot. It was you that made me do it. You and Hatchet fixed up things very nicely, didn't you? Yeah, like falling off a log. Now, look here, Mr. Gus Lohman. I know who's going to fall this time. I'm sorry, Martin. I have no room for you in my uh, organization. Of course, if you want a little money... Stick it on the wall.
business are you doing here? How did you get in? Ways and means, Lerman. Ways and means. Well, you better get out, or else I'll throw me out. You try, you slab. What do you want? Quite a lot. Don't get any ideas about that safe, Leo. Guns now, eh? The snake's progress. You don't get out of here, I'll use it. You haven't got the guts. Ah! Oh! <coughs> Hurts, doesn't it? Don't I know it? Now, you listen to me. You knew that that Bond Street job was a damn sight more riskier than you made it out to be. So did Hatchet. Both of you knew I was a mug, so you kidded me on and I fell for it. And I suffered. Now it's your turn. We were obeying orders. Whose orders? Can't tell you. You will. But what you did to me then was nothing to what you did to me a few days ago. I didn't do anything. No, that's just it. You didn't do anything. But you told me I was washed up. That I couldn't do another job with these wrists of mine. That I bungled things. There was no room for me in your organization. That hurt me more than anything else. Couldn't do another job, eh? I've done more jobs the last few days than ever you'll think up. And got away with them. I'm sorry. You'll be sorrier. Where's Hatchet? Hmm? In the garage, I suppose. Give him a ring. Now, look, be sensible. Let him on the blower. What shall I tell him? Turn will be here at 10. Sharp. Regal Garage? Yes, he's here. All right, I'll call him. What name? Hatchet, you want it on the blower? Okay. Just coming. Thanks. Hatchet here. Oh, hello, Gus. What's up? No. No, I can't. I'm picking up a party about that time. Well, if it's that important. Okay, I'll be there. Well, what did he say? You'll be here at 10. You can keep that muck. And listen, don't get any ideas between now and then. Leo, we're pals again, aren't we? What do you mean by again? Is that you? Look, forget what I said about 10 o'clock. Yeah, mine, my sharp. Yeah. No, no, I can't stop to explain. No, I've... Um... Hello? Uh, hello?
chance. That's what I'm here for. Got your ticket? Your ticket? Yes. If you want to dance with any of us girls, you've got to buy a ticket. Sixpence a dance. Where do I get them? Just there. surprised. Sorry about the tickets. I didn't know. Haven't you ever been here before? First time. Seems very popular. Always is on Wednesdays. Amateur night. What goes on? Oh, prizes for making a fool of yourself. Have you ever won any? No. I'm not made that way. Well, you dance well. It's a long time since I did any dancing. Well, had your money's worth? Nearly, but not quite. I'm very serious. I'm very thirsty. What about a drink? What's the time? Nearly nine o'clock. Oh, time for the nine o'clock follies. Okay, I'd love a drink. How about an orange aid? Yes, if you can get it. Well, it might take me a few minutes. Where are you going to be? Uh, over there, in the alcove. All right, and don't move. Can't. I'm too tired. <laughs> will be awarded for the three best amateur performances. The judging will be determined by the amount of applause received. I now leave you in the hands of our capable master of ceremonies, Jerry Winters. Good evening. The first little lady on my list is Miss June Williams. Hatch, is that you? Come upstairs, we can't talk here. Hatch. Hatch. What's up? Taxi, sir. Leo. Keep quiet. I'm getting. Okay, but, but look, Leo. You don't want one, do you? Get in. You? No. You. What is all this? I couldn't have. I didn't. You did. That's, that's it. Well, prove it. Your gun. Your fingerprints on the butt. Gloves don't show fingerprints. I won't get away with that, you know. 400 people have just heard me announcing a dance competition. You've still had time. It's only just happened. Well, suppose I call a cop and say you did it. Not a chance. I've got a lovely alibi. Cheap, too. There's no man. I know anything about it, see? I... I came down and found him here. I don't know him from Adam. Can't you? You ask him to come here? Remember? On the blower? You told him it was Loman speaking. Listen, Leo. I'll make a bargain with you. You get rid of this lot and give me the gun and, and nobody will be any the wiser. There's two hundred quid in it for you. Nothing doing. Now you get your friend as far away as possible. And remember, I'm keeping the gun. So long, Loman. I'm casting you as the fastest getaway driver in town. Better get cracking. Now for my alibi. Thank <laughs> you. 
Scrum. Paul Frying's aid. You are, sweetheart. Thanks. Shouldn't have bothered. When I make up my mind to do something, it's done. What's up? Nothing. I'm sorry I was so long, that's all. Boy. I'm sorry. I didn't notice the time. I'm glad. What's your name? Carol. Carol Dine. But they call me Chester D. Ann. What's yours? Leo. Leo what? Leo the lion. What are you doing in a dump like this? The girls got to eat. What, at ten cents a dance? <laughs> That's what they pay me. You're worth double. You'll never know what being with you has meant to me. You're a funny guy. Am I? Well, what about the other Bobsworth? Okay. But one dance for two tickets. You said I was worth double. Getting tough, eh? That's it. Leo the lion. <laughs> Good evening. You in a hurry? Yes, it's urgent. Where's the... where's the... The nearest? Yes, that's oh, it. Oh, some distance from here. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, you, you haven't seen me, officer, have you? It's terribly urgent. Oh, I get you. No, never set eyes on you. Officer! Hello, what is it? There's a man in the shelter. I think he's dead. things. Where's he from, Jeff? Evening Bulletin, sir. Okay, fellas, bring him out and take him away. I say, Chef, get this. Here from Canada to study British CID procedure. Detective Inspector Rogers attached to Scotland Yard. He is here seen investigating last night's taxi murder. Oh, Chef, you don't half look pretty. Take a look. I look as if I've done the murder. And did you? Yeah. That's why I'm going to find out who did. I'll see you later, Charlie. Uh-huh. If you want me, I'll be at the Regal Garage. Okay. Who was on duty last night? Joe's on duty most nights. Shall I call him? Please. Joe? Joe Fisher? Hello. Come in the office a minute. Oh, I'm just going home. I know, but it's urgent. What is it? What is it? Oh, I've got home, you know. This gentleman from Scotland Yard. Oh, is he? Well, I ain't done nothing except work. I'm Detective Inspector Rogers. Did you know a man called Hatchet? That's right. He garage is here. What's he been up to? Somebody shot him last night. Cool, lummy. Well, you can knock me down with a ten-inch spanner. Was he the shelter bloke? Yes. How horrible. Blimey, and I was talking to him last night right when I'm standing now. Oh, dear. What are you talking about, Joe? Oh, not much. Somebody phoned, though. Oh, no, who it was? Now, uh, let me see. Coleman? No, that wasn't it. Bowman? No, that wasn't it. I know there was a man on the end of it. Newman? No. Sounded in a bit of alley. Wasn't very distinct. What time was this? Oh, I should say round about eight o'clock. Anybody else call? Yes. Mr. Lang. Oh, that's Gregory Lang, the art dealer in Ruston Street, Mr. Rogers. Regular customer? Yes, he often used to call Hatchet up to drive him home. 
Anything else? Yes. What? I want to go home. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Thanks. Good night. I mean, good morning. Well, he seems all right. Wish he could remember that other name, though. Tell me some more about this Mr. Lang. Well, as I've said, Gregory Lang is an art dealer in Ruston Street. Most unfortunate affair. Most unfortunate. Hatchet was a good fellow. Always on time, always courteous. One of the few taxi drivers who opened the door for one. In New York, if you get out of the taxi. Yes, I know. If you do. You have a car of your own, of course, Mr. Lang. Yes. Oh, I see you wonder why I employed Hatchet. Exactly. Well, uh, Mr... Rogers. Mr. Rogers. I'm an art dealer, but a soft-hearted one. A rare combination, perhaps. <laughs> Nevertheless, I uh, help when I can. Isn't this exquisite? Yes. I take it then that you didn't want to keep your chauffeur waiting at night, so you employed a taxi. Yes, that's right. You see, Hatchet was a poor man. Well, you know what it is. Yes, very commendable, Mr. Lang. Did you pay him regularly? Yes, weekly. Has he left a family? I don't know the details. No. Well, thanks for the little chat, Mr. Lang. Thank you. I wish I could have been of more assistance to you, but uh, I think I've done all I could. This is all one can do in uh, this strange world. Goodbye, Mr. I'm so sorry. Rogers. Rogers. Goodbye. Next one, Millerton. Harold Peter. Attempted fraud, fraud and embezzlement, blackmail, robbery with violence. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Stand over here. Know him, Charlie? Hmm, don't we all? Harry Milliton, alias Professor Eustace K. Smythe, alias the Reverend Luke Matthews, etc., etc. Well, what is it this time, Harry? A little accident. A trifle which was really no fault of mine. But in vulgar parlance, I fear that I had to hold the baby. Come off it. Do you call bashing a woman a trifle? How long have you been out? A matter of ten days, sir. What were you doing last night? Last night? What time, sir? Any time, all the time. During the earlier part of the evening, I was taking refreshment with an old acquaintance. A college friend of mine. Name? Uh, uh, Solly Abramson. Oh, he's out, is he? Yes, yes. He's remarkably well, considering the rigors of... Where were you? In the Cranstone Arms. Railton Street. That is correct. After that? We went upstairs and played billiards. Until? Chucking. Uh, closing time. Check on that, Charlie. Sure. You'll have to wait. Oh, but, but, my dear sir, I have a most pressing in here. Get out! Uh, yes, sir. Waiting room. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Well, what do you make of him? One morning he'll finish up with the 8 o'clock walk, and that'll be one rat less in the world. Afternoon. Hello, Rusty. What brings you here? You blokes. There must be some mistake. We only want the bad lads. <laughs> Thanks, Gov. I suppose you want to know where I was between the hours of 8 o'clock and midnight last night. That right? If you like. <laughs> Dead easy. Inside. What, again? That's right. Drunk? That's right, but not disorderly. What did you get? Seven or six. Was it worth it? <laughs> not all. Anything else? No, thanks. Nice to see you. Afternoon. 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 McAndrews is cuckoo. I asked for a district roundup of known criminals or any recently released cons. What's he want to send Rusty in for? Matt's a canny Scott. He's a tin canny Scott. Leo Martin. Mm, the Bond Street job, huh? How are the wrists? They're all right. Where were you last night? What is all this? I've done my time, isn't that enough? Or do I have to spend the rest of my natural answering a lot of questions I don't know the answers to? Now, take it easy, Martin. Kind of sore, aren't you? Sore? Yeah. <laughs> my wrist wasn't the only thing that was hurt. Conscience, maybe? Maybe. Or being let down. I thought you wanted to know where I was last night. Sure. You'd like to tell us? 
It says in the papers, Hatchet got his between eight and ten. Well? I was in the Brinsmead Palais de Dance. Inspector Rogers' office. Just a minute. There's a man downstairs, thinks he can help. What's his name? Lowman. Have him sent up. Bring him up. Show Martin in there. In there, Martin. Hmm. He seems a bit tough, Shep. He thinks he is. Lohman. Now, where have I heard that name before? Mr. Lohman. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Lohman. I'm Detective Inspector Rogers. Detective Sergeant Weeks. How do you do? How do you do? Sit down, won't you? Thank you. So you think you can tell us something about last night's taxi murder? Well, not much, I'm afraid, but it might help. Well, go ahead, please. Well, I'm the manager of the uh, Palais de Dance at um, Brinsmead. Brinsmead? Yes. Last night I was working in my office and I thought I heard a shot fired. What time was this? About uh, nine o'clock. You're certain you heard a shot? Well, not absolutely certain. You see, the dance band was making a lot of noise at the time. Haven't you and I met before, Mr. Lohman? I don't think I've had that pleasure. I have. I don't think so. I don't remember you. You seem to have a poor memory. Well, it's not what it was. Excuse me, butting in. I was in his place last night. You can prove my alibi, can't you, Mr. Lohman? You must remember me. Oh, yes, of course. You were dancing with one of my best hostesses, taking quite an interest in her. She was worth it. See? What's her name? Carol. Carol Dame. Did you hear a shot, Martin? How could I? I was on the floor. You never left the hall? No. Not all the evening. Ask Carol Dane. Yes, she's uh, there every night, Inspector. Well, I'm sorry I can't give you any more information. Uh, it wasn't much, I'm afraid. It's quite a lot. You helped to prove my alibi. Thank you, Mr. Lohman. Have you uh, found the gun, Inspector? Should think there'd be fingerprints. And you have mine. That's our business, Martin. Thanks for coming along, Mr. Lohman. Not at all. Goodbye. Perhaps I'll see you later. Later? Yes, even policemen dance. Oh, yes, of course. Sit down, Martin. What's that? Just a mascot? Mrs. Wilkins! Smash and grab, Lohman. Smash and grab. You can't bust into a man's office and get away with it. Can't I? I wait until a place is occupied before I get busy. I've got a longer string of guts than you have, Lohman. I don't wait until a man's place is empty before I search for the gun that'll hang me. You're gonna pay for that and pay plenty. Down. Why not? I'm enjoying myself. Where'd you get my address? From Carol? Yes. I suppose you told her you'd give her the sack, unless... No, I didn't. I swear I didn't. You see, the girls were kidding her about having fallen for you, so I said I was a friend of yours. Yeah. Like you pretended to the cops, eh? 
You're a poor fisher. When you got yourself in deeper, they'll twist your evidence, and as soon as they find the gun... Listen, Neil, I'll get you 200 for that gun. Right away? I can't do that. I've got to raise it first. Well, you'll find that money, and then we'll talk. And I want it in ones, mind you. By 10 o'clock tomorrow night, or what else? Where do we meet? Your place? No, I don't want you around there. Make the place untidy. Oh, this office? Like hell. You might have some friends here. No. Down in the alley where you knocked off Hatchet. Sort of appropriate. And listen, Loman. Right now, your life isn't worth anything. You double-cross me, and it'll be worth less than anything. That you, Noel? Yes. Loman has turned up at my place. Yes, he's here now. Come round, will you, and uh, wait in the drawing room till I call you. Mr. Lohman. Good evening, Mr. Lang. I know you told me never to come here, but, but I'm in terrible trouble. In a way, it concerns you, sir. Oh? You, uh, you know Hatchet's been shot? Of course. Did you shoot him? Oh, no, Mr. Lang. How are you mixed up in it, then? I, uh, I hid the body in the shelter. Where did you? I was forced into it. Loman, you always were a soft-gutted rat. I can't imagine you taking the risk of hiding a murdered man. What happened? Well, you, you know that Leo Martin's out. I'm not interested. Well? Well, Leo's got it in for Hatchet and me. It's a question of revenge, you see. He thinks we let him down about that Bond Street job, remember? I'm not concerned in Bond Street. My shop is in Ruston Street. Yes, sir. <clears throat> May I smoke? No. Leo shot Hatchet with a gun with my fingerprints on. He's hidden it, now he wants 200 pounds for it. He's trying to frame me. As he talks, I don't stand on earthly. So you want 200 pounds? Yes, I want about tomorrow night, too. Why, Loman, have you come to me? Well, that gun. It's got my fingerprints on it, all right, but... What? Well, that's the awkward part about it. What is? That gun, Mr. Lang. To hell with it. And you, get out. Yes, sir. Do I have to throw you out? Oh, no, I'm going, but, um... Well, you see... It's your gun. I don't carry firearms. Get out. Do you remember I asked you for one for the Palais? It's a dangerous job, and I need protection. You wouldn't give me one, so I... I took that gun from the drawer of your desk. The police may trace the number. I should accuse you of theft. Leo Martin's got the gun now, and he won't part with it till he gets the 200. You're a mess up. Pity the man didn't shoot you. Police do trace the gun to me. I shall tell them exactly what you told me. Will that be wise, Mr. Lang? What do you mean? Well, the police are anxious to find the organizer behind the Bond Street job. Then there's that other little matter in the city. And that um, other job. <laughs> you know, rumor says this place was built on very strange foundations. Must have cost a lot of money. You sure you can't manage that 200? I'll go. Where does Martin live? 27A, Mile Street. What time and where do you have to meet him? 10 o'clock at the alley, back of the dance hall. All right, I'll attend to it. And the 200? We'll get him tomorrow. Evening. Thank you, Mr. Lay. I'm sorry about this. Get out! Yes, Mr. Lay.
I suppose you'll come to check up on my alibi. Yeah. Well, there she is. A very nice alibi, too. Detective Inspector Rogers, Carol Dane. How do you do? Evening, Inspector. You gonna pinch my boyfriend? No, not yet. But I'd like a word with you, do you mind? No, I'm used to it. See you later. Okay. Over there. Yes. So you're a copper? That's right. Why are you uh, here? I might ask the same of you. I'm earning my living. So am I. Cigarette? No, thanks. Are you an American? No, Canadian. Come over here to learn a thing or two? Well, that's one way of looking at it. I'd like to learn a little something about last night. A little something being Leo? Mm -hmm. He was with me from... Uh, 8.30 till 11. Then he saw me home. Where do you live? Shepherd's Bush. All about uh, half an hour's walk from here. He left me at the street door. Is that as far as he went? Oh, God. <laughs> and while you were here, he didn't leave you at all? Only to get a couple of orange aids. Oh? What time was this? Nine o'clock. How do you know? The, uh, the prize competition had started. That's always at nine. Did you drink the orange aids? What do you think we did with them? Rub them in our hair. <laughs> Sorry. How about earning a living? You mind? No, oh, go ahead. Go for that first. Oh, same last night? Yes, we sold out at half past eight. Half past eight? You certain? Of course I'm certain. Thanks. Thanks very much. Okay. Dear Gregory. Come into the library. Oh, how gloomy. You want to drink, help yourself. Of course, I want to drink. Something seems to have upset you, Gregory. What's the matter? I want Loman taken care of. Is he being naughty? He's a damn nuisance. He was always that. He must have excelled himself. He mustn't get peeved over a silly man like Loman. <laughs> cheers, cheers. What's he done? He stole a gun of mine. That gun shot Hatchet. Don't tell me he did it. Be sensible. Yes, that was silly of me. <laughs> Who has the gun? Leo Martin. He wants 200 pounds for it. Loman's prints are on it. So there are two. Malefactors. Quite. I want you to look after Loman. I'll attend to Martin. You know how I loathe being mercenary, but uh, will it be the usual fee? Quite. Sorry, no can do. Why not? Expenses are increasing by leaps and bounds. How much extra do you want? Another 50 would ensure satisfaction. All right, another 50. When does Mr. Lohman shuffle off his mortal coil? Before 10 o'clock tomorrow night. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> Silly, Mr. Lohman. Well, well, nil nisi bonum de practically mortuis. Good morning, Mr. 
Mr. Tenser. Good morning, Jonah. And what can we do for you this time? Birthday greetings? Wedding invitations? Or would it be Black Edge morning cards? The last were a bit expensive. Yes, everything costs more these days, Jonah. Yes, life and death. It's becoming too expensive to live and too dear to die. But I don't see what we can do about it. We might be able to do something. About living? Yes, concerning the increased costs of living. And how about the other? Strangely enough, my dear Jonah, the dying would help the living. The costs have increased. I was afraid of that. Considerably. Another 20%. But I assure you the service will be just as efficient. Oh, well. Then we must resign ourselves to this increased cost of dying, mustn't we? Thank you, Mr. Penn. Now for details, sir. The name is Gus Lohman. Yes, I understand. Need I say any more? No, thank you, Mr. Penn. Everything will be carried out in a satisfactory, safe, and decorous manner. Excellent. Just one more detail. Yes, Jonah. Cash with order, please. <laughs> Who is it? I have a message. Oh, yes. Just a minute. Now, come in. My name's Crackle, Jonah Crackle. A mutual friend, a certain connoisseur. Yes, I know. Have you got it? No. He wishes to see you at his house. He says it isn't safe to carry big money. Too many crooks about. I have a car outside. Blast. Won't take long, will it? Oh, no. Not very long. All right. Go. No noise, please. Driver, you know where. Thanks, Mrs. Wilkins. Good morning. Good morning. Late sleepers. Ten o'clock. What about it? I've got a clear conscience. Or perhaps you think it's a hangover. An orange aid. I wish I could sleep late. I've got too much on my mind, though. Shouldn't be a copper. Well, what is it? Loman. What about him? What do you know about him? Nothing, except he's the manager of the pally. He was shot last night. Ah. So I suppose you think I did it? Why should I? Because you're a copper. And I'm a spiv. Because the bloke who said give a dog a bad name and hang him was dead right. Give a man a stretch and he's guilty of anything. Even murder. Well, I've done my whack. I've suffered and I'm out. I'm a free man. Yeah. Ha! They're free men. Why don't you blokes leave me alone? Cigarette? No. Yes. Now look here, Martin. Put yourself in my position. There's been a great deal of crime lately, serious crime. And we're out to break it up. I've been assigned a certain job, and I'm going to do it in my own particular way. You seem to think I'm picking on you in particular. Well, I'm not. I'm just picking the threads. But they're going to lead me somewhere. I see. And what sort of thread am I? Not much of a one. Where were you last night? At the pally. 
With Carol then? That's right. All the time. Till 11 o'clock. Then I came straight back here. And you've fallen for her. That's my business. Quite right. Sorry. Have you got anything on her? Nothing whatsoever. I haven't anything on you, except that I feel you knew Loman a bit better than you appeared to in my office. Oh, he knew me? Maybe that was it. Maybe it was. Well, I'll leave you to dress and to get in touch with me if... If you... I hear of anything which might lead to the arrest... That was it. Yeah. It would help me, and... it would certainly help you. Hot water. There goes the big shot. Yeah. You wait here while I get a taxi. I wonder what Rogers meant by that crack about Orange Aid. He's dangerous. Yeah. Damn dangerous. I better get hold of Carol. That's it. Do my stuff with her. What is it? Leo Martin live here? Yes. Why? I want a word with him. I'm a police officer. What? Another one? This is a respectable house. I know that. All the same, I want to see him. Oh. All right. In there. Thanks. Yeah? Inspector Rogers sent me. He wants you out at the yard. Uh, Dutty. What's your name? Detective Sergeant Stubbs. Where's your warrant card? Here. I see. Ten minutes ago, he said he didn't want me. Well, he's changed his mind. He's just received some important details about the Loman job. Why don't they leave me alone? Now, there's nothing to worry about, Martin. Isn't there? So you print your own warrant cards, eh? Well, Leo, you're going to answer a few questions. You can answer them with or without. Without what? Pressure. Where's the gun? I'm not saying. You'll be talking before the day's out. I want that 400 I was going to get from Loman. Then maybe I'll talk. If I don't get it, you can bump me off for all I care. See? We might even do that. Yeah? That'd be clever, wouldn't it? Another stiff found. You've been leaving too many of them around lately. Snowy, get the tray. Right. A little invention of mine. I'm very proud of it. There you are, Governor. See that? That's quick-setting cement. You put your feet into that. And when your feet are firmly fixed, we carry you into a car. The boys drive you out to a certain spot on the river. And over you go, splash and sink like a stone. And there you stand, Leo, to attention at the bottom of the river, like a little tin soldier, swaying backwards and forwards among the fishes and the weeds. That's why you won't be found. Where's the gun? Give me 400 quid and I'll tell you. Or do you have to ask the big boss? Snowy, start the machines. Right, Governor. Take him over here. Untie his wrist and hold his arm. I'm going to take your memory back to Bond Street. 
Something heavy came down in your wrists then, didn't it? All right. No! No! Not my wrists! This is really most enjoyable. Afternoon tea at home, instead of at my shop. Thanks that you to our friend here. If he hadn't swooned. Why, you Christmas carol, I ought to slap you down where you sit. Now, now. No offense. Martin, that behavior won't get you anywhere. Noel is most efficient in uh, everything. And I'm sure he's very sorry for you. Aren't you, Noel? Ever so. Must have been ghastly. Thanks for the sorrow. I'd have stuck it all right, but when it came to these... Yes, 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 I know. Now sit down, Martin. Sit down and relax. We must talk. I must apologize for going to such extreme lengths in endeavoring to find the gun. An ugly, ill-shaped piece of metal, anyhow. But unfortunately, it's my property. Yours? Yes, mine. Now, you see, Martin, how frank I am with you. Why not reciprocate? You mean, me be frank with you? Okay, up to a point. Your gun's in a cloakroom, and you can't get it without the ticket. See? And where is the ticket? Perhaps I gave it to somebody to take care of. It's very sensible. We know there is no ticket on your person. And we searched your room. Again? Hmm. But you were looking for a gun. You never thought of a cloakroom ticket. Oh, but we did. In all modesty, I may say that I did. An ex-convict mustn't carry a gun. So you parked it. Hence the search for the ticket. <laughs> Clever of Noel, wasn't it? Yes, if he'd found it. Now you listen to me. While I've got that gun, I'm fairly safe. Once you get it, it's curtains for me, because I know too much. I may have given that ticket to somebody, hidden it, or even burnt it. But whatever's happened to it, I'm not parting. Get me? What do you want? 400 quid. Leaps and burns, Gregory. A job with your lot, and the gun stays where it is. Very interesting. Suppose I agree. How will you know I'll keep my word? Because I've got the ticket. And how can I be certain that you won't post the ticket anonymously to the police? Because I'll be with your lot. And if I do... Am I on? My dear Gregory, may I make a suggestion? No. Just a tiny thought, but <laughs> so fragrant. As our new member is so keen to work, I wonder whether he might be of use on tomorrow night's train journey. Oh, it's tomorrow, is it? Yes. Martin, call at my shop in Ruston Street tomorrow morning at 11, when I shall suggest something for you after your own heart. What about the 400 quid? They'll be awaiting you. Okay, I'll be there. Can I go now? By all means. But keep out of mischief. Always remember that the policeman is the citizen's friend. <laughs> what a pal. So long, Mr. Lang. Goodbye. So long, slave. Barbarian. Look what you've been and gone and done. Oh, I'm sorry, Tom, I'm sorry. Sorry, I think you're blooming well out sorry. Who are you? What do you want? Can you tell me if Miss Carol Dane's here yet? Oh, I don't know. I don't dance. Beer's my hobby. Well, there's something for your hobby. Oh, thank you very much, sir. That's very good of you. Tell you what, take my advice. You'll go through that opening and knock on the first door on the right. 
That's why them dancing dolls change. Thanks so much. I'm sorry about the floor. Won't take you long, will it? Blimey, mean, it doesn't matter if it do. This here polishing gives me a lovely first. Yeah, I bet it does. Oi. Speak to Miss Carol Dane. It's urgent. Name's Leo. Leo. What is it? I'm sorry about this, Carol. I must talk to you. Will you give me a minute? What's up? Get away from that bunch. I had to come to see you because you're the only one that can help me. Why should I help you? Because you understand me. Tell me you felt sorry for me when I saw you home. Oh, I'm always telling people that. It's my weakness. I'm so sorry for others, I've got no time to be sorry for myself. Yeah. But there aren't a few more like you in the world. Might be a better place. Cool, what a world. Full of dance hall girls. Well, what is it? Money? No. It isn't that. Fact is, I'm on a bit of a spot. Wouldn't be Detective Inspector Rogers by any chance? In a way, yes. What, uh, what did you do? Smash and grab. I was forced into it. I was hungry, real hungry. And I got let down. And now the police won't let you alone. Is that it? Yeah. That's it, Carol. They follow me about. Spy on me. I try to go straight in life, and all the time they're after me. It's hell! Poor little Leo. Not so tough. Hmm? No. Not so tough, dear. How can I help? What did Rogers talk to you about when he had you over there in the corner? Uh, orange jade. What did you tell him? That you brought me some orange jade at nine o'clock. And I did, didn't I? All right, all right. You did. And it took me nearly ten minutes to get it, didn't it? Yes, about that. Hello, Carol. Hello, Peggy. Just a minute. Excuse me. Aren't you the kid that works behind the bar? Yes, that's right. You remember a daft man? Canadian, I think he was. Thursday night. The night after the amateurs. He might have been talking about orange aid. Yes, I remember him. What did he say to you? What did you want to know? He said, what? No orange aid? And I said, no, I've sold out. And he said, this happened every night? And I said, yes. And he said, last night? That'd be Wednesday. And I said, yes, at half past eight. Yeah, if you two like a bottle now, I'll get you one. No. Okay. What have you been up to, Leo? Nothing. I'm innocent. I swear it. Dead innocent. Well, they... They won't leave me alone. If you want me to help you, you'll have to tell me all about it. The truth, mind you. Of course it'll be the truth. About a fella, you know him. He owes me quite a lot of money. He also has a cloakroom ticket. He's trying to blackmail me. Leo. Now, Miss Dane, what can we do for you? It's, uh, it's about, uh, Leo. Leo Martin? Yeah. Yes, we thought it might be. Didn't we, Charlie? Yeah, we did. I expect you think I've come here to plead for Leo. Well, I haven't. I'm here because he asked me to see you. Did he? Why didn't he come? Is he scared? No, he's not scared. It's only that he's... Well, he's done his time and wants to go straight. Now that he's out, everything and everybody seems to be against him. He's got an idea the police are trying to trap him and pin things on him that he didn't do. He thinks that 
If he came himself, we might twist his words and make him appear guilty. Is that it? Yes, that's it. Guilty of what? He said murder. Mr. Rogers, he didn't kill that taxi driver. I know he didn't. How do you know, miss? Because he, he couldn't have. Why not? Because he's not a murderer. He's just a... Just a... Just a misunderstood young man who once made a mistake and now thinks the whole world's against him. Is that it? I'm sure of it. Are you in love with him? No. I'm sorry for him. Really sorry. I've been pushed around in my life, and I know what it means. You get so lonely. It eats you up. Where are you going, Charlie? Uh, I've just remembered that I've I, got uh, to... I uh, want you to stay. Uh, you said that you didn't come here to plead with us. What did Leo ask you to tell us? He's misled you about the alibi on Wednesday. Yes, go on. He said it was silly of him. He knew I wanted orange aid and how difficult it was to get. So we stayed away purposely to make an impression. Yes. He was only trying to be kind. Little things like that help. Especially when you've been used to just anybody. Look here, Miss Dane. I dare say you pride yourself in your common sense, don't you? Of course I do. That's right. We all do that. Charlie and I are just the same, aren't we, Charles? Uh, you've said it. But sometimes we allow influences to blind our common sense. What was your first impression when he brought you the drinks? He must have had a job to get him. Why? Well, because I know there's a rush on them. Sure. So to make quite sure that you got the drink you wanted, he bought two orange aids earlier in the evening, hid them, and eventually produced them to prove to you how kind he was. Yes. And I believe him. I don't know who's the bigger fool. You or Leo? Now, look here, Mr. Detective Inspector. Now, just a moment. How did he know it was you he was going to meet when he first bought them? It might have been any other girl. And if it had been, why shouldn't he want to try to impress any other girl? Why shouldn't he want to try to get some fun out of life? After all he's been through. No wonder he wouldn't come here. How right he was when he said the police try to trap you and twist your words, just as you're trying to trap me. I'm sick of you, the whole damn lot of you. Oh, do have a cup of tea, miss. To hell with your tea. Yes, miss. Is there anything else you want to tell us? Oh, yes, something most important. Something all you big sleuths can really get your teeth into. Last night, I had my bag snatched. Oh? Where? Oh, near home. Man jumped out on me, said, are you Miss Carol Dane? And he snatched my handbag and beat it. Anything of value? Ask yourself. A dance hostess at 10 cents a dance. And they call me Chastity Ann. Did you report it? The passerby did. Suppose you'll pin that one on to Leo Martin. Anything more? No, thank you. I've said enough. Perhaps you have. Well, anyway, thanks for coming. Oh, I'm sorry, you two. I'm always saying the wrong things and getting in a muddle. Because I've been in a muddle all my life. It's meeting too many people and listening to too many stories sort of... Influences you? Yeah. Guy once said this to me. He called himself a poet. <laughs> and you go home to your lonely place. Place your future in the mirror, take the makeup off your face. And you wonder if it's worth it, and if you can stand the pace. That, uh, stuck. Oh, he was drunk, of course. So long. So long. Well, Charlie, what do you think? She's all right, but he's a rat. Why do you think her bag was snatched? Oh, some spiv who thought he might have got hold of some dough. He was just unlucky. I wonder. He knew her name. He was told to get hers and hers only. Why? Because somebody thought she might be carrying some evidence. Evidence of what? She'd been with Leo. We haven't found the gun yet. But he surely wouldn't give no, her... No, he wouldn't dare. But it 
Might have been a cloakroom ticket. Charlie, have all the left luggage officers checked for a small parcel left by someone answering to Martin's description left between the hours of 8 p.m. and midnight Wednesday last. If you draw a bank at the main line stations, then try the undergrounds. After that, you can try the show places and the restaurants. And all the good pull up for Carmen and the public lavatories. Oh, it's easy. Dead easy. Must have the diamond. My dear Van der Beck, for the third time, the diamond is not here. I know she's not here, so where is she? She will be coming along later, won't she, Gregory? I have already told you that our agent has retained it for 24 hours. The stone will be in my possession tomorrow, and we can absolutely guarantee that he will have delivered it by then, can't we? Indubitably. Gentlemen, I have an appointment. Now, look. I suggested for With the time... With much trouble, I shall explain to my client that the sale is postponed. For the complete collection, I give you until tomorrow evening at this hour. Good evening. No, that's all right. I let myself out. Dear, dear. Blast Leo Martin to hell. And blast you. Oh, yes. It was you who suggested him for the train job. You said he was right for it because he was, uh, I don't know, remarkably tough. Well, it's tough, tough, too tough. He's got a diamond, and he's got the cloakroom ticket. And he's got us. I might have known he won't deliver the complete collection. He's nothing but a cheap crook. A little patience, Gregory. Martin can't dispose of the diamond without you. And you've only paid him 200 pounds on account of the 400. Just a little patience. <laughs> Let's have a tiny drinky. Hmm? Leo, what is it? Anybody in? No. Let me in. I must talk to you. But I'm just leaving for the Palais. Please, Carol, please. In here. Blinds. After I'd seen Rogers, I waited on the embankment for an hour. Where have you been? What's wrong? I've been busy. I'll tell you all about it later. Carol, I'm frightened. And what is it, Leo? The police. They've been making inquiries at my rooms. They've been here. No. Listen, Carol. You and I are going away together. Abroad, see? Somewhere with the sunshine and peace. I love you, Carol. I want you, dear. I must have someone in my life. I'm so alone. <coughs> What's that? Oh, it's only a passerby. What are you doing? A light. They'll see a light. They'll know somebody's in here. What was I saying? 
that you... you want me to... to go away with you. Yes, that's it. You and me together. No more cheap dances with cheap men. No more where have you been and what you've been doing. Finished with all that cattle, see? Look, darling, I've got some dough. We're all right for money, aren't we? I saw Rogers. Oh, yes. Rogers. What does he say? Did he believe you? About the drinks, I mean, and everything? I don't know. Well, that's just it. You never know where you are with those rats. They kid you along and pretend to be friendly, and the next minute they stick a knife in your back. Well, it's goodbye to all that. Listen, darling. I've got to see a man who owes me plenty of dough. Now, while I'm gone, I want you to pack. There's a train that leaves Victoria at 9.45 for the coast, and I want you to catch it on your own, see? I won't be there, because I'm going to kid him along. But I'll arrange for a car, and I'm going to pick up that train further down the line. Got it, sweetheart? Leo? Yeah? Will you give me your word that you're on the level? That you haven't done anything bad? Will you swear on your oath that you're only running away like this because you've been unlucky and that you are innocent? Will you? Leo? I swear it. Will you come away with me, darling? Yes, Leo. I swear on this Bible I'm innocent. Them, the police. Let me out the back way and lock it up after me. Look. Take this. Get yourself a first class ticket. Don't forget, Victoria 945. Okay. And I'll pick you up later. Martin been here? No. Wait here. But I tell you, he hasn't been here. Hmm. The Sunday parlor, eh? Not much used, is it? No. Sure, Leo Martin hasn't been here? Yes. Then who smokes in a room that isn't used? All right, you smart tech. Leo has been here and you've missed him. And I'm glad you're here, glad. He's been hounded and bullied by you and your crowd until the poor devil doesn't know whether he's innocent or guilty. Oh, yes, he does. He's innocent, I tell you. Just now he swore on that Bible he was innocent. I love him. Love him. Sit down, please. Carol, you don't love him. You're sorry for him. And in a case like this, that's a very dangerous sentiment. Look, don't you realize that he's deliberately and cruelly playing upon your finer instincts? The instincts of a girl to be to be sorry for the underdog. Why, why, he's using you as he'd use anybody, anybody to gain his own rotten ends. No. Look, there's a warrant out for the arrest of Leo Martin for the murder of a taxi driver called Hatchet. And a charge of murder is never made unless we're certain we're right. Look at me, Carol. You 
got to believe me. You do, don't you? Yes. Then where is he? He's gone to Amanda to get some more money. And he's going to board the 945 from Victoria, further down the line. He said he wanted to get away into sunshine and peace. Did he mention who this man was? No. I don't know who it is. Did he ask you to go with him? <laughs> Carol, for God's sake, forget him. He's dangerous. <laughs> Think of the way that cheap little... I'll get. I've no time for where have you been. What have you been doing? Where's the missing stone? I'm sick of questions. It's here. Let me see it. How much dough have you got? We shall discuss it when I've seen the stone and the cloakroom ticket. Come on. Nothing doing. I've got both of them with me. Show us the money. All right. I don't want you in this. Hadn't you better go? Perhaps it would be as well. Just stay no. All right, Gregory. For nearly 500 pounds here. Not enough. You owe me 200 quid without the stone. Show me the stone and the ticket. OK. You see how much I trust you? One diamond. <laughs> you didn't think of this one, did you? One gun. Is that all? Yes. It isn't, you know. But it is, Martin. Darling, fool them. Told you I would. What's up? Scared? Yes. Ah, uh, forget it. Everything's gonna be okay from now on. I'm gonna rig you out like a film star. We'll show them on the Riviera. And me, everything of the best for little Leo. I didn't bring any luggage because I'm gonna buy some new stuff. Lordy, what I've been through is nobody's business. But old Leo is tough. Cheer up. Let's see a smile, kid. What's the matter? Forgotten something? 
Got your passport? Because I have. Print it while you wait. I haven't brought it. Well, that's awkward. Why? I never intended to bring it. What are you getting at? You. I'm getting at you. I'm getting at the filthiest apology for a rat that ever crawled out of a sewer. The dirtiest little coward who ever hid behind a dance frock. A hypocrite, a thief, a liar and a murderer. You slut. Go on, hit me. Kill me. You're used to that, aren't you? They can't hang you twice. Why didn't you kill again? So they didn't dance where you came from. You're gonna dance, all right, but not at the Palais. So they can't hang me twice, eh? Yeah. Thanks for the tip. This is where you get your passport. Got any prayers, Chester Diane? Don't move or else. Raise him. Hiding behind a woman again, eh, Martin? Yeah. Like falling off a log. Come and get him, Shep. I don't mind. I will, you know. It's all right, Carol. Oh!